<laughs> like, oh, not again. Hey, have you ever had one of those days at work where you wonder why you're at there, at that job? All the time. <laughs> have I ever. And you sometimes Ooh. think, dang. No, I love. Oh, I love my job. No, no, but you know, yeah. we have those days where we're just like, dang. Yeah. It might be nice to do something different. Yeah. So, you know, I had one of those. It wasn't the worst day of all, but, you know, I just thought, I got to put up with this stuff. Mm hmm. So on the way home, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about, like, well, what are some worst jobs? It's not like my job is even no, that no. bad. Right. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. pretty fucking chill. Right. Mm -hmm. So I asked ChatGPT, of course, as I do. That's, that's your boyfriend, so it makes sense. I wanted to know five, what are the five worst jobs that'll make me feel better about my own? Okay. Okay. It so I thought we'd just explore these. Yeah. So these are the five worst jobs a person can have. Mm -hmm. um, a hooker? Well, I don't think <laughs> chat. Way to start? I don't think ChatGPT <laughs> was going there because I think it oh. meant like legitimate jobs. Okay. W two jobs. <laughs> Got it. Not independent contractor jobs, but W okay. twos here. Noted. Okay? <laughs> All right. My fault. <laughs> uh, but hey, if you're a hooker, let us know how bad it is, or if it's great. Does it got benefits? Oh, don't mm. think so. Okay. Uh, number one was sewer cleaner. Oh yeah. Mm. It says, imagine having I feel like to spend. I've seen that on TV before. Yeah, well, this is these are gonna okay. These are gonna be like uh, a lot of micros, dirty jobs. Yep. Mm. All right, but this is don't. I'm saying it, it's just these are jobs that make me feel better about what I do. Gotcha. Sewer cleaner. Imagine having to spend your day deep in the sewers, cleaning out waste while dealing with hazardous chemicals and extremely unsanitary conditions. Mm. On top of that, there's always a risk of contracting diseases from the environment. Mm. That's hot. Yeah. It takes a strong person, I think, to do that job. To go home smelling like yeah. shit. Like, at literal yeah. shit. I like tell you right now. Every day. When they look at their check, they say, I hope so. That shit. I hope so. It was worth it. <laughs> what's the wages? Pun intended. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what's the wages? I for don't know. Dang. I didn't ask. Because I want to I wanna know that they're looking at their check and it's so truly worth you. it. Because I about really it, hope for their it's, sake it's worth it. It's always the jobs that seem to have lim not limited like qualifiers, but people that that there's not a big pool of people wanting to do them. You know, like skyscraper cleaners, like mm -hmm. that window washers on a skyscraper. There's not a lot of people that say, mm -hmm. I want to do that. God. So the mm -hmm. price to get people up there to do it mm -hmm. goes high. I mean Maybe. I mean maybe, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I'm so I so thought, up afterwards, I think like, so. I don't know what's involved in sewer cleaning. No. Like, I thought, you know, maybe if you're a solitary person mm -hmm. and, you know, that might be your jam. But to your point of how you would smell, I remember going to a party once and these, the people hosting it worked for a seafood company mm. that processed seafood. Mm. And so you walk into the foyer, or mm. not, is that what you call that space? Mm -hmm. Actually, it was, it was the mud room. And it's where they all their fucking clothes were. Mm. It was fishy as fuck. They should have left mm. it outside. But it still came into the house. No, that was in the mudroom. That is oh, outside. Yeah, that's outside. Mm. But it still came to the house like, this is fishy. So, yeah, so, yeah mm. just imagine the pooper. You got to shower before you leave, hopefully. Number two, and I don't know if this is a real job, and I do have the uh, earnings. Apparently, the ChatGPT sewer cleaners earn about forty to 60000 per year, depending on location and level of expertise. I thought you said money. No. I thought you said they were going to be looking at their check like this is worth it. Yeah, but that's forty to sixty thousand. That may be in like that's before their OT. Wyoming. Yeah, no. I'm just saying. So the number mm. two, number two was roadkill collector. Aw. Okay. Aw. So sad. Oh, okay. They had to pick up a. So first off. Okay, this job involves scraping dead animals off the road, right. often in busy traffic and dealing with the stench and mess left behind. Mm. It's physically and emotionally unpleasant. Now, have you ever seen one of these in action? Like someone actually picking mm. them up? No. I just normally see cars continue to run over until it's completely decimated and ground into oh dirt. <laughs> until you know what I'm saying? Becomes, it just becomes one with the road. Yeah. But like, think about right. it. Out of nowhere, the giant ass deer that's been so, on the yeah. freeway on the side of the yeah. road for mm. two weeks is now gone. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And they're probably waiting until night where there's less traffic. Mm. Probably, yeah. 
Or maybe, if it, of course, it could be in the middle of the day if it's going to be a hazard driving, blocking the road, you know, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. True. Apparently, a roadkill collector makes thirty to forty thousand annually. I know that there are people who do roadkill collection for free because that's like dinner. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I knew where that was going. <laughs> but uh, man, you see that sound... deer down the road, Bobby Thanks. Joe? Now think Don't about get this. that for din din. No. They're Supper. On, they're Stop on call it. for eight hours a day. Right. Mm. How many calls do you think they get with including travel time? Even if they said, let's just say they get four. But I, th I think are, for 30 to 40,000 a year, not that many. But I bet you one driver has a huge stretch of road that they are responsible for. It probably, probably takes them an average. Probably a whole entire territory. It's yeah. not just one stretch of so road. So think about that. Like you might be on one side of the territory. The other side is mm -hmm. two hours away. Mm -hmm. You might spend most of your time just driving. So it's a great job for a guy who, or a gal who likes to drive. Sounds like it. But so you still have to deal with the carcass. Part thing. of me feels like this is a job within um, animal control. Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I've never seen anybody scraping off Roco, but probably because it's at night. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I have, I have known people who have called people to try to get it taken care of, mm. but... Never witnessed it, seen it, yeah. Number three is crime scene cleaner. Yeah. Ooh. Cleaning up it. after a crime or accident is both emotionally and physically grueling. Yeah, I can imagine. I didn't even realize. So, like, if it happens in somebody's home, do they still do it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I didn't even. I thought they left it. <laughs> That's, I mean, it's wild. But I really thought they did. I'm sorry, Bobby Joe. Your uh, parents have been murdered. I'm not even laughing Figure at out that. how to clean it up. I'm not even laughing at that, but I'm just laughing at the idea. They're like, all right, we took all our pictures. <laughs> now it's on you. Mm -hmm. like, oh. No, I mean, they probably, because, you well, know. they don't clean up all of it. Like, so. Mm -hmm. There's a stain there. There's a stain. Yeah, they won't. They'll take parts. They'll take things out that need to be taken yeah. out. But they're not. Because they cutting. need it as yeah. evidence, basically. But well, if no. it's not evidence, they're not cutting no. up stuff and leaving. That's you. No, That's no, true. no. I, th I, th I think that there, there are. People that will go in after the whole crime scene's been investigated, like, you know, oh, we're done with yeah. it. And they go in to try to refresh it and make it as good and clean as possible. There's a yeah. whole actually series out there. It might be called Sunshine Cleaners yeah. oh. about people that got into this just by what happenstance. Biohazard and stuff like that. They're not Biohazard, cheap yeah. You got mm. cheap. They deal with body fluids, blood, tragic scenes, require high mental toughness. It's, yeah, pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, number four. How much do they make? Oh, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. 35 to 80 per year. Mm. It's often higher due to the disturbing and hazardous nature of the job. Mm -hmm. That's quite the range, 35 to 80. Again, depends where you're at, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you're in a busy place, you know, where you got a lot of customers, a lot of action like New York City, yeah. But then maybe you're in a lower place where you don't get as much, you know? Yeah. Maybe Missoula, Montana, you're not getting as much action. So, uh, number four, fast food cook. Interesting. So, working in a hot, fast-paced kitchen while earning wages and dealing with low wages and dealing with customer complaints can make this make even the most calm person feel frazzled. Long hours and weekend shifts are common. So, flipping burgers. Of course, in Washington State in 2024, you'll be making $20.76 per hour mm -hmm. as a fast food cook. It's more in than Seattle. a warehouse picker. In if Seattle. You're, if you're at a fast food restaurant and you're complaining... What's your complaint? Doesn't look like the picture when you order. Like we all know that. I mean, if you're a customer, customer. If we, if, if, you know how many times I want to complain about my burger that I know doesn't look like the picture, and I get it, and it's got three onions and they're all on the side. Like I'm not going back in there because I knew when I rolled into that place. If I got to get it through a drive-through, I'm not looking for quality. I hear you. I open you know? that burger up and I'm like. Could you at least put the onions? You try it. You like try evenly. It a harder, but I'm not gonna get for onion. twenty bucks. And then I'll just spread them around myself. Right. The only time I actually I don't think I've complained, mm -hmm. but it's like okay, they forgot my damn sandwich, or I ordered a sausage McMuffin with egg and only got a sausage McMuffin. And I'm like, God dang, they forgot the egg, and I still didn't complain. And that's when I realized you should always get the receipt. Always get the receipt because they're like receipt, and I'm like, no, nah, I don't need no receipt. I'm like, get the receipt. Right. But um. I did have to go back one day because uh, the girl I was dating, the fries were cold. And she wasn't having it. So I had to go back and get new fries. 
I think the worst thing that's ever happened to me at fast food where I actually like took the time. I don't leave reviews on shit. I'm going to be real. I don't do that shit. It's a fucking waste of time. I actually went and left a review. McDonald's in Gig Harbor, Washington, <laughs> to be specific. <laughs> we ordered three chicken nugget meals. They said, we'll have to make more. I said, that's fine. We can wait. Get our meals. Go up to the window. Get them, get our meals. Go home. And mind you, ain't shit close in Gig Harbor. <laughs> it would have been a drive to go back. Yeah. So I left a review. But I had two chicken nugget meals. And one of my chicken, the third chicken nugget meal was a whole fucking box full of ketchup packets. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. They knew you weren't coming back. Bitch like, ass teenager. Ever she ain't coming back. <laughs> ain't coming back. And in Seattle, they're going to get paid $20.76 hey. for that. Hey. To give me some goddamn ketchup yeah. that I already had in my fridge. And I'm not saying I'm against minimum wage, you know, but I'm saying you're flipping burgers and you're teenagers. Yeah. But anyway, those guys are make twenty five to 30000 per year. Now, there are a lot of adults who are working those jobs and, you know, they're going to be of certain demographics uh and that's like what they can do they mm-hmm. literally could probably have been a doctor in africa yeah but the degree is not recognized here and they got to mm-hmm. go through extra training so they're working at where they can get a job mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh ostrich babysitter apparently is a job wait ostrich. hold on that's number five that's number five we're ostrich on number five ostrich babysitter. what are they like hostile or something uh yeah so this is a niche job doesn't have a widely published salary hold on, let's go up here uh watching over a large sometimes aggressive birds all day is no walk in the park you're responsible for ensuring the ostriches are safe and cared for which is harder than it sounds so yes it's a niche job they couldn't come up with anything else but ostrich babysitter you know what would be Someone's really awesome though is to babysit baby pandas have you guys seen those videos <laughs> mm-hmm. they're so fucking cute <laughs> even <laughs> adult pandas are but so but like, like they they, so it's like a attention. whole job where they're just sitting there and caring for the baby panda and it just rolls over and it's all clumsy and it's cute and <laughs> oh they yeah. just they look like they need so much attention though they should get it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get? I you should have every drop of it. <laughs> I watch videos with you know people that have like emu, emus, mm-hmm. and stuff yeah. like that. Those birds, they're very aggressive. Well, they're mm-hmm. basically dinosaurs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Okay. And I, so, I can see an ostrich, even a baby, being like, "I'm not gonna listen." I'm you not see how you see how big those like, bodies are me. and how small the, how small their heads are. That's not a lot of brain for that big ass body. It's mostly just aggression. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but just <laughs> those guys are making twenty five to thirty five annually. It's more about having a passion for the animals than pay, apparently. So those are the top five jobs to make you feel better about what you do. Mm. So okay. yeah. Okay. Did it help me today? Mm. Did it? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I bet there's some adventure in a ostrich babysitter. You got some stories, yeah. Where you got some marks on you. So. I could see why all of those would have its upside. Okay, maybe except for sewer cleaner. Yeah, I don't know. I still I think out anything I would. Got to really a shower a lot on that one. I still oh. think that before you get home, like don't even take the smell yeah. home with you. I think that wage is gonna vary from a big city yeah, like Seattle to yeah. That's that's gonna be. That's, and if you're lucky, you might find the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> right. Okay. Anyway, those are the top five jobs. Make you feel better about your life. Tell me what your job is, if it's shitty and why it's shitty. Didn't work. Yeah. Didn't work. 